Oh, wait. What, what am I looking at? Oh, sometimes it takes a second. It's time to suit up. We've got some ass to be. Totally won this fight. We go out and touch some grass. Then begin the collect shit arc. Yep. Lots of shit. The most important though, being this lance. I know what you might be thinking. This weapon doesn't have any throwing attacks. It's just a standard thrusting spear. Which begs the question, what the hell are we doing with this? Speed run to Rhea Lucaria. Or a side path on the way to Red Wolf of Radagon leads to a special Ash of War. Dropped by this scarab. To keep in theme with the run, I use Kukri's to dispose of our little friend here. Well, we now have our means of damage for the first part of the run, until we get the better shit. Thanks, dogs. Now for some runes to help use our lance. Well, that works. Throw everything you got at him. You may need to buy some kukris from the wandering merchants around the world. First boss down. Easy. 20 strength, 14 dex is the requirement. Now we can slap on our Ash of War, which also adds an arcane scaling. And now we test it. We use the Ash of War on the lance for the stance damage, and wow, does it not disappoint. Now for more collecting shit. Speedrun strats for the arrow's reach talisman to decrease the damage drop-off of our projectiles. Beat this guy's ass for our first bell bearing. Plus five should do the trick. Now for Margia. Headshots do massive damage. There's not really a way to exploit it, but it's useful nonetheless. Criticals are off limits though, as it's not throwing your weapon, so just spam throw. This fight is very straightforward. I mean, it's just Martin. Anyone who's ever died to him just needs to get good. Scrunch for more upgrades. Remember that there's a whole ass physic. Collect useful tears for said physic. Then it's the deck this halves. I'll just ride because I'm lazy to take the other cooler rounds. And it's here where we can now fight a mini-boss for a very useful early talisman. This boss is extremely easy. I mean, look at her. Shouldn't be any issue. Pretend I didn't die. Oh my god.
Oh my god. First try. Anyway, Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% extra damage at full health. Bell Bearing 2. Then my stupid ass decided to try Radon. Oh, what an absolutely terrible idea that was. Yeah, we'll be back later. I went for the easier demigod instead. Fuck my life. And sure enough, he was significantly easier. Our range is absolutely insane, with this Ash of War being one of the best range choices for the run. Plus, its easy stuns make it very viable. Just don't run out of FP and get caught lacking. Easiest first phase of my life. Second phase is pretty much the same. Easy stuns, fuck him up. Kukri as a finisher. For the disrespect. Shut up. To our home, bathed in rays of gold. <sighs> now to speedrun Vare's quest. Step one, totally whoop this invader's ass. As soon as he stops spamming spells. Step 2, cry to Vare. Step 3, get bloody. And voila! Use it right in front of him. Now we're in hell. Which gives us access to an Albanaric harm free rune farm that this weapon is perfect for. Level up Arcane for damage, and maybe health. So we can give Radon another try. Compared to DLC, this guy should be it. Piece of cake. Let's get serious now. Proper distancing goes a long way. And we have the arrow's reach talisman, so damage drop-off isn't as much of an issue. A lot of Radon's attacks are close range, especially for first phase, so we have the advantage. Don't be afraid to use Torrent to get some distance, either. Keep your distance, and, you know, try not to get hit.
Phase one, piece of cake. Once he lands from the stratosphere, he gains more ranged options. But otherwise, this fight runs the same. Stance breaks aren't very common with this boss, so be sure to take advantage of them when you can. GG's, very fun fight. One of the toughest of the run for sure. With two demigods down, we can go into the capital. But we've got this asswipe to take care of first. Sneak up behind him for a surprise attack. Wow, this weapon rules. Shit. Stuns are plentiful. Damage is great. FP not so much. We're doing great. His ranged attacks are all you really have to worry about. We may trade a few blows. The victory was always going to be ours. GG's. First try, too. For now, let's skip the capital, though, and go straight to the sewers. We can gather precious upgrade stones, as well as Moog's shackle. After a few final upgrades, an invasion, for the purifying crystal tier, It's Mogan time. Dearest Mikola. With all our prep done, this fight will be no problem. Our range is great, especially for how slow he is in the first phase. The shackle makes getting headshots easier, if you're positioned right, of course. For a late game boss, He's not so bad. Oh yeah, this is a late game boss. He does outrageous damage. One Erd Tree avatar later, and we can get two incredible tears for our physic. I should have used the opaline for a decreased damage, but I wanted to try the stun glitch on Moog to skip his second phase, so I stuck with the stone barb tier to increase posture break. Hmm. The glitch never worked, but the tier was still very useful for his second, much harder phase. Phase 1 is more or less the same. Keep your distance, and you should be fine. Should be. Wow, the timing on that was incredible.
the physic helps a lot. Like a lot, a lot. The stairs also help me line up headshots a little better. Rest in peace, Mo. Sorry you were brainwashed into being a weirdo. Now we have access to the DLC. And in turn, every other weapon of the run. Ah, it's good to be back in the DLC. No bosses are required for most of the weapons. They reside in these ruined forges that aren't hard to find. Ruined Forge Lava Intake contains the Smith Script Dagger. Ruined Forge of Stallfall. Past contains the Smith Script Spear, the Smithing Talisman for 10% more damage to throwing weapons, the Smith Script Cirque, and a free Ancient Dragonstone at the end of each forge. Taylor's Ruined Forge is next, which contains the Smith Script Axe. The Smith Script Great Hammer and the Smith Script Shield. In terms of range, the dagger is a weaker option, but consumes no FP, unless you use its skill, which increases its range considerably. The Cirque is also poor with its range, and has no throwing skill or light attacks. It does look sick as hell though. The Axe also only has strong attack throws, but has more considerable range and decent damage. Don't know how that one missed, but okay. Right in the noggin. The spear has some better range, but isn't super powerful. Once again, only heavy attacks or throws, but it can benefit from the spear talisman. Too bad I'm too cool to use it. My spear is better than yours. The shield is one of my favorites. You'll want to swap from Thor to Captain America with this bad boy. Its range is in the middle, and actually only comes from its skill, which doesn't cost a lot of FP, thankfully. Hell yeah. And finally, Thor has his hammer back. This thing has incredible range second only to the Spectral Lance. Heavy attacks are your throwing, and while it has an insane wind-up, it's absolutely worth it. I mean seriously, look at that range! After a massive upgrade montage of getting all the weapons up to at least plus 12, using runes from a source, we grab the Axe Talisman to increase our charge throwing attacks by 10%, this bad boy in the DLC 
for 15% more damage for our two-handed weapons. Totally don't die to this guy. And then we farm for more throwing weapons. This one guy can drop a weapon, but... Yeah. Buy the recipe for crystal darts and Lyernia. And use them to convert one of these golems in Talu's Forge to fight the other. Not sure why this works, but I'm not complaining. Be sure to help the big guy out, and reapply your crystal dart mind control when needed. With a lot of patience, you'll eventually get it. The Golem Fist. Oh boy. Before we dive into that though, I figured I'd mention another weapon in the DLC that can be farmed from the imps in the Fog Rift Catacombs. This farm took forever. Like, 178,000 runes later farm? And the weapon in question is the Lizard Greatsword. It technically has a strong attack that launches a projectile, but unlike our other weapons and even throwing consumables, it's not boosted by the smithing talisman, so I decided not to use it. It's more like a crossbow in a weapon than a real throwing weapon. And it kinda sucks. Anyway, figured I'd mention it before a comment did. As for these golem fists, where do I even start? This weapon sucks. Its range is in a whole separate category. May as well be negative. Only when you're right up on an enemy do the projectiles hit. And you can't be up on an enemy, because unlike our other weapons, your fists have a separate hitbox. Meaning, if you're too close, you'll actually just be punching the enemies. And that goes against the run. I tried really hard to use this weapon against some kind of boss, and even picked an easy one. And it just wasn't gonna happen. Not only is the range awful, but the damage of the projectiles alone suck. Ooh, that's kind of small. I gave it all I had, but this weapon is just too terrible. Get it away from me. Using a different weapon, the difference was staggering. Triple digit damage. It's a miracle. And this weapon was a lot of fun. It made this fight so much easier than the Golem Fists. They even have stagger potential. Easy fight. Let's hope the rest of these weapons can perform as well. I wanted so badly to go ahead and use the hammer. I quickly learned that its slow wind-up is quite lethal. It drains a lot of stamina and leaves you wide open. And if you're not careful, it will actually hit your enemy with the wind-up, which, as you can imagine, would go against the run. Not to mention phase two, this fucker can dodge, posing an issue. We're gonna need more tools for this fight.
I decided to go and bonk an invader. Bonk this stupid ball guy. Who I totally let live after he surrendered. And all to obtain the Margit Shackle. Then I bonked an Erd Tree Avatar for the Green Burst tier for faster stamina regen. And that, it was time to get serious. First phase is a lot of slow walking, which gives us ample time for full charge throws. Unless his attacks dodge ours, of course. You can use the shackle to sometimes hit him. Let's try that again. Much better. The best time for a full charge throw is when you're at full stamina to ensure you have some left to dodge. My hammer's better. Phase 1 is the easy part. Phase 2 you have to account for his dodging, meaning you'll have to swap up your tactics. From here on, it's best to use uncharged throws, which will be quicker and less stamina draining, but will do less damage. Best time to attack is when he's in the middle of an attack and can't dodge. And if you're lucky, you could still fit in a few charged throws. With all that in mind, this fight is still quite challenging, but fair, which is the best kind of fight. Just like that, King Morgoth is down for the second time, hopefully the last. Sorry Morgoth, but it's Ritual at this point. Doors block, go to the mountains, blah blah blah. Bell bearing three. Get sniped. The usual. I completely forgot that I already used the Cirque, so we're using it again. And straight to the boss. Stamina regen tier plus the spiked crack tier we got earlier for extra charged attack damage. That's pretty much going to be our standard for the Physic. With this weapon having bad range, it's a good thing this boss is meant to be fought up close. Hug his ankle and break it before he breaks all of your bones. The follow up charged heavy, in my opinion, has less range, so be wary of that. You can use your range to avoid the fire pillars while still attacking. Just like that, the space goes by very smoothly. Phase 2 is a bit trickier, since his weak spot is now his hands, which are not always easy to hit. So 
Sticking to his crotch, stomach area works. And you can hit his hands fairly easily after the slam attack. As is typical with Fire Giant, it's a slow but fairly easy fight. Assuming that your lock on doesn't suck. A couple of taint hits later. And the giant is down. Oh yeah, remember Melina? Yeah, she's gone now. And we wake up in... wherever the hell this is. Upgrade stones. Upgrade bell bearings. Then back to the DLC. At the Cathedral of Manus Metter. No, not that Manus. We go on a weirdo's quest. Find out I could have thrown these things while on the horse. Fuck my life. Blow into some holes. Have a ring moment. Snag this neat gesture. Platform through Shadow Keep's rooftops. And finally arrive at this god awful boss. Like how I'm fighting him. To the right of that boss is this wall, which you can perform the O oh Mother gesture to open. Who figured this out? Finger ruins of Dio, but I barely know her. Fuck. Haha, <laughs> not today. <laughs> Shit. Oh my god. <sighs> I never had this many problems on my initial playthrough. Blow another hole. Do you mind? Ugh, gross. Finish this weirdo's quest. We can now access his weird basement. We did all of this for a specific weapon, one that drops from this invader down here. My luck with invaders hasn't been very great this run. How bad can this one be? Yeah, I can throw stuff back at you. This weapon is definitely not the play. Ugh. I swear. This stupid fight makes me just want to jump off the... Oh. That was anticlimactic. If I'd have known it'd be that easy. 
finally have a need for this bad boy. And of course we need this for sleep pots. Enjoying the view, perv? Totally first try pyramid head here. Who likes to jump along with me for some reason. Just kinda silly. The Lord of Blood Talisman to increase our damage after bleed by 20%. Speaking of that, hope you got Fari's Mask before killing Moog. I didn't forget this time. Additional 10% damage increase? So these claw weapons are actually terrible. But as you saw from my deaths, they build up bleed, hence the setup. Charged attacks for weaker short ranged hits, skill for wider, slightly further ranged and stronger hits. You know the drill. Sleep the duo, and bleed them to death. Um, hello? Where's my bleed? Any day now. Wow. It turns out, the bleed buildup on the charge throws is ass. I tested it on the grail, and it takes forever to apply bleed. So, plan B. Buff up. And use the skill instead. It being so wide means the closer, more blades hit, meaning massive damage. The difference is staggering. Now for you, Skinny. I love when my challenge runs end up finding unique weapons to beat these two. It's almost every time. A shockingly easy Godskin duo fight. After totally surviving the Hellish Bird Marathon, we get another Somber 10 for later, more bell bearings, and a secret side path. Hope you grabbed keys for it. After having a good old friendly duel with our best bud, and further showcasing how great this weapon skill is, is soon ours. And he gives us a gift. He's very much still alive and happy. Right? <laughs> right? Our next weapon is the shield. Let's see what we can do with this. Damn, that range is incredible. Fuck. This weapon absolutely shreds. It's FP efficient, great damage, solid range, it's very quick. There's nothing not to like about this weapon. And it hones in, too. Needless to say, this was probably the easiest Mavicus fight I think I've ever had. Though, I notoriously suck 
at base two. Let's see how we do. It can even hit him in the pillars, oh my god. There it is. I've mastered dodging this attack now. Oh, and it can hit twice. There's not a single flaw with this weapon. Wow. Oh my god. I think we gotta change our Avenger of choice. Captain America time. Hmm. Oh, wait. Hmm. That's more fitting. We're in the end game now, ladies and gentlemen. And it's time for the dagger to finally face a boss. Grab this for an extra 15% jump attack damage. Get the fuck off my tower. And this in the DLC for another 10% increase to jump attacks. And fashion. But first... I've been waiting for this. Alright, let's get serious. Gideon is another NPC boss, meaning he's going to spam dodge and cast 50 billion spells in a row without breathing. The daggers make for a fast attack, which we can almost perfectly execute whenever he winds up for a spell. This strat makes Gideon surprisingly easy. Just hope it showcases the daggers enough. Oh my god. Yeah, never mind. Get the hell out of here. I found a nickel for every time a boss died and still managed to give off a long ass speech. Now it's time to get our axes out. Because it's time for an all out axe fight. The first Elden Lord. This would be the part where I'd say my axe is better than yours, or something. But his is without a doubt better. The only thing going for us is that when he charges forward, it lines him up for a perfect headshot. But that said, don't expect too many staggers from him. This is a burly man, and you can really feel it with this puny little axe. Get proper distancing and slowly whittle his health down. Phase 1 Part 2 is a bit harder since he constantly charges at you, constantly closing the distance. Your best bet is to bait out an attack and counter. What the hell? It phased right through him! What the fuck? Cheating bosses aside, phase 2 is still straightforward. But now comes the hard part.
and a lot of horror loose attacks hit like a dump truck on steroids. You'll once again be relying on attacking only after he does, as it's your safest opening. And for every roar attack he jumps, the next one he won't, so use that opening wisely. Horalu Part 2 likes to stay extremely close to you, but once again has easy tell openings that are safe from a range. Trick shot. Another trick shot. I'm great at this. Just remember, he hits like a truck, so be careful. My heart cannot take any more of these close calls, man. Get out of here. Oh, I look so badass all bloody. This is a good look. Now it's the spear's time to shine. And just like the axe, it's got another spear to go against. Back in the DLC, we need as many skibbity tree fragments as possible, which means spearing fearsome beasts like a true warrior, narrowly escaping the jaws of death. And maybe even just a few tiny glitches to get more fragments. The stake of America in the corner is a sign of success. Give me your douche fragments. You douche. At no DLC bosses, we can get to Blessing 15, which isn't too shabby. And now, it's time for the only boss of the DLC I will bother to fight. Mongrel Intruder. Hello there. Mesmer always starts the fight with his slam attack, which is a very easy opening, if you weren't already rusty on fighting him. And our damage with the spear is, uh... Yeah, his spear beats ours. Take this! Oh shit, he threw his back! I think Mesmer is one of the fair fights in the DLC, but this weapon says otherwise. In the embrace of Mesmer's Detour time. Sweep this boss under the rug. Say hi to Ronnie. Shut the fuck up, tarnished. And buy this bad boy. All in on heels. And bring out the shield, baby. Wow, the difference is insane. No, 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 shit. Not this time. Phase one goes very easy once you have enough practice on dodging his attacks. Timing is everything. Man, to be honest, I don't get why I don't just beat him up while he's phase changing. He's wide open.
I'd smash. Phase 2 starts the same as Phase 1, with another slam attack. But in my opinion, Phase 2 is actually easier. He uses his snakes more, which leaves him wide open, for sometimes multiple attacks. We even got a stance break. If you can handle Phase 1, Phase 2 won't be very tough. Dodge some snakes. Get multiple attacks in sometimes. This fight's cool, but this phase is significantly easier. Almost out of FP. Let's make it count. With one more throw to spare. With the shield, this was an insanely fun fight. Turns out, though, you can still use the throw attack with no FP, so maybe the talisman was overkill. Level up to 35 dex, 18 faith. So we can go and use Mesmer's own spear. Use our second somber 10 on it. And let's go try it out. Wait a second. I leveled up strength instead of dex. Fuck! I'm so disappointed with myself. Respect to have enough dex and faith for the spear. Now we can properly test it. Its range is awesome, third in line and does fire damage. Fire Scorpion Charm for 12% more fire damage for a boss who's very weak to fire but very strong against projectiles. Fuck out of here boy, get that weak shit out of here. As with most projectile runs, Radagon poses a huge obstacle being able to negate most attacks, meaning, once again, we have to find the proper time to attack, usually being after he attacks first. We need to be quick though, so we don't rely so don't rely too much on charged throws. Unless of course there's a big enough window for it. Boss has very predictable attack patterns, making part one of the final fight pretty simple. Unless hitboxes fuck you over. Or this attack, which I still have no clue how to avoid. Brace for impact. I was really hoping that kill. Finish him off, and swap to our last weapon of the run. One that hasn't gotten a boss fight yet. Yep, it's spear time. Our weaker spear here is perfect for a boss whose main weakness is physical damage, and isn't extraordinarily difficult. Oh, and they added Torrent to this fight, making it easier.
Easy to predict moves. Solid damage and range. And this won't be too hard. Maybe a bit tedious, but... Spear the beast like you were Egon harpooning Bale, and you should get through this fight no problem. The only thing that could really stop us at this point would be Elden Stars, but what are the odds of that? Horse away! Our horse makes avoiding Elden Stars so much easier, but I don't think Elden Beast likes it very much. Be sure to use the horse sparingly, for it actually isn't all that helpful. <laughs> like, what is even happening? With all that in mind though, plus having fought this boss 50,000 times already, it goes over smoothly. Er, almost smoothly. Still, we did it! Hooray! And just like that, we beat Elden Ring using only throwing weapons. Though it feels like I'm forgetting something. Oh my god, the Golden Fists! Can't even one shot Rick, soldier of God. They're at plus 21. There we go. I hate my life so, so much. And now we've beaten Elden Ring using only throwing weapons. If you liked the video, please be sure to leave a like, comment what your favorite weapon of the run is, I think it's pretty obvious mine's the shield, and consider subscribing for more random, potentially awful challenge runs. Thank you so much for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed, and of course, have a great day.